Hi and welcome back to another 3ds Max tutorial. My name is Arnold Feiler and uh, today we're gonna talk about 2D lines and how to work with them in 3ds Max. So we're gonna start right away and uh, to get started all we need today is we're gonna work mostly in top view. So we're gonna go uh, we're gonna select top view and I'm going to use Alt W to maximize the view and um, that's it. Okay, where do we find the uh, 2D lines in 3D Studio Max? So you go to create and choose the second tab, which is uh, splines. We have two different types of objects here in the splines category. Uh, let's pick, uh, for example, the ones like a rectangle or circle first. So I'm gonna get a circle and click and drag a circle or maybe a rectangle click and drag a rectangle, the ellipse, click and drag the ellipse, or whatever, here's a star, and so on. So those objects, basically, uh, when you select them, and you, uh, you, for example, the star, you select and then go to modify, that is the second tab here, so create and modify are the ones we use the most. When you go to modify, you will see that the star still has its parameters, so you can change the radius, and the points and let's go for five points and so on uh, the radius uh, the fillet radius and so on also the same thing with the rectangle so you select the rectangle you can choose length also edit it length width and maybe corner radius or the circle that's much simpler it's basically just the radius and so on uh, distant a length and width of the ellipse so those uh, objects are still influenced or still uh, defined by their parameters which we see under modify. The second object type that we find in the 2D splines is the simple line and the line can be used to draw a general line. So either a line that has uh, corners as this one or a line that has uh, smooth or what, the, what they are called Bezier points so you can draw whatever line you want. Now, the big difference, when you now select these line uh, objects, and you know what, I'm going to get rid of my background grid, that is the keyboard shortcut G, so we see a little bit better. Now, if I select my general line and I go to modify, you will find out that it doesn't have uh, length, width, or radius, and so on, like the other parametric objects, but it has uh, a lot of options uh, but the, uh, the most common thing that you see is on the very top, you can see three different levels or sub-levels uh, under selections, the vertex, the segments, and the spline. So you can edit those lines on different levels. You can edit the corner points, you can edit the segments between the corners and the whole spline and so on. Uh, you will find those uh, in um, only in the line object. So the big difference is now between the parametric objects where we still have the parameter parameters and the general line that has those three levels. Um, basically, you can also edit any parametric objects the same way that you would edit a line, but with only one difference, you have to destroy somehow that it still is, uh, that it still has its parameters. There's two ways to do this. Uh, one would be you select the objects and here is the uh, what's called the modifier list or the modifier stack here and when it's where it says modifier list uh, the name right now here is star and when you click at, on an editable line you see line so to to to, to make the star the same way um, the same way editable as the line you'd simply have to ch select it then go to the modifier list and pick the modifier that's called editable spline, editable spline, so, oh sorry, it's called edit spline, edit spline, and from now on it is an editable spline, it can be edited, you see the same three ways on the vertex level, on the segment, on the spline level. So that is one way to do this, to, by adding an edit spline modifier. Later on there might be some, might have some limitation when to use the edit spline modifier, but that is, in general, a very good uh, solution. To get rid of the edit spline modifier, I did not change anything. You can just click here on the remove modifier from stack and now it is 
a regular star again with all its parameters. The second way, and that is not so easy just to undo it by removing the modifier, the second way is simply to select the star and then use a right click with your mouse and choose convert to editable spline. So from now on it changes the parametric object star into an editable spline in the shape of a star and you have the same uh, three levels here where you can edit your stuff. So uh, that kind of destroys the star geometry and makes it an editable spline just like the line is. I personally prefer this method but uh, for some, for some uh, reasons or maybe later on when you add more modifiers the edit uh, spline modifier it might be better. But in general, if you are not planning to use it as a star anymore, why not right click convert to and convert it into an editable spline. You can do the same thing, for example, with a star or with a circle, convert to editable spline, and now it's the same thing. And here's the here's the ellipse, convert to editable spline, and so on. You can also select more than one, like select all of them, right click convert to editable spline, and now they are all uh, splines. Good. So much for the difference between a parametric object and an editable spline. So let's see how we, uh, first of all, can draw with those tools. And I'm going to start with the most general one, with the line tool. Uh, to draw the line tool, you just si simply click here on the left side and the line will start and when you use short clicks with your mouse you will get corners every time you click somewhere. Of course you can use um, you can use the, uh, the the object snap, the 3D snap function and you can also use um, you can also hold your shift key and that forces the line to stay parallel to X and Y. So that forces to stay parallel to the x, x uh, to the x and y li uh, axis okay so the next thing is uh, when you click and drag your mouse you can see that it creates a curve and the actually how long you drag it defines the handle of the curve so you click and drag it and you will get a handle before i continue how to stop a line is simply escape escape stops where you last clicked on a point. Uh, now here's one thing that I would like to change right away before we continue. Now uh, I've drawn a simple line and especially where we created a smooth curve or a curve with handles so uh, it's supposed to be smooth. When you zoom in you see it's not smooth at all. It's uh, basically just a, a couple of straight lines but not really looking good. That is that is, uh, uh, you can change that and when we change it once it will also change for all the future lines that we draw. So when you select your line and it's already selected and you go to modify, you will find, um, you go to modify, you will find up here under, sorry, they changed it in the new version. It's, uh, it, it used to be right here be, be underneath rendering, so between rendering and selection. Now it's all the way at the end of the stack. Here it is, interpolation. When you open interpolation, and let's try, see if we can get it over here, can we? Yeah, this is where it used to be between the two. I'm used to that, interpolation. And now, for example, my line is selected, and if I increase the steps of the interpolation, you notice that this, the line is getting smoother, especially when there's turns. But you don't want this to like increase it all the way, you get a nice and smooth line. You can keep that to six, that is good. In, instead of that, just click adaptive. And adaptive means it automatically Wherever it's necessary to get a smooth curve, it uses more in, uh, steps of interpolation and where it needs less, because it's more or less a straight line, it uses less. So to show you the difference here, one more time, zoomed in, so that is a nice and smooth curve. And when I unclick the adaptive, you see how awful it looks. So make sure if you want a really nice smooth curve, uh, you have adaptive clicked on, uh, cl uh, turned on. So now when I have an adaptive curve and I start a new one, uh, uh, line and you start a new curve, you see that the new one is adaptive right away, so it has a nice and smooth curve. So if you change it once, uh, the next one will also be um, here in adaptive at interpolation. 
Okay, so a few more things for the line. First, when you start drawing a line and you do, you make a wrong click by accident, you can always use backspace on your keyboard to go one step back. So I just deleted a couple of steps and then I continue or backspace, you can delete the last steps. Okay, uh, with, I already mentioned with escape, you can uh, stop the line and with shift you can force it into a parallel x and y plane so that is the uh, that is the line so far so let's um, let's now create a few of the uh, of the of the simple objects here let's do a i'm going to do a circle and an ellipse and a rectangle and in order to Edit it later on here. See also the, the, the rectangle has an interpolation, not turned to adaptive, the circle also not adaptive, so it's not very smooth. You can select all three of them, uh, in my case, three of them, right click, convert to editable spline. So now they are all editable splines and here under interpolation, you are able to turn them adaptive. So here's the circle where it's specially uh, necessary to do that and make it adaptive and then it's really nice and smooth. Or here's the ellipse, you can see it's not c smooth at all and when you turn it adaptive then it is. The rectangle is not necessarily adaptive as long as it hasn't, doesn't have any curves, so I'm going to keep that in order to, uh, to save some, uh, save some uh, memory or make it simpler for, for the program. I'm not going to turn the rectangle into an adaptive, but could also do that, will not change anything. So let's get started with the possibilities of how to edit a spline. And I'm going to uh, do it with a simple line and I'm going to create the simple line and I'm going to create short clicks in order to get a, oh, there was a wrong one here, short clicks. And now I have those lines with straight curves, straight lines. And let's go to modify and see what we can do in those three levels. And those three levels, by the way, uh, you can start editing in one level by simply turning, for example, here vertex on. So when you click on vertex, you notice that this is uh, slightly bluish here. And also as a warning sign, you see up here that there are four dots in the uh, next to the name line when you click on the segment then you see there's a segment sign and so on if you need it there's also a shortcut for those levels one two and three and that is one two and three on your keyboard when you hit three one more time the, the level is turned off so you, when you go when you get into the first level with one and one more time on one it, you get out so that is if you want to need, need to get in you just press one for this level two for the next one and three for the last one so let's do it step by step and start with vertex so in vertex level you are now can when you are in move uh, select and move you can select a vertex so that's a corner point of your line and for example move it so when, when you are in vertex mode and you select only one vertex, it only makes sense to move it. Usually you can do move, rotate and scale, but one point cannot be rotated and also not be scaled. So here it is. Uh, you can move it uh, to a different location. What happens if you delete a vertex? If you delete one vertex, the two neighbors will do the job and will uh, will continue, uh, will uh, be connected. So if I select the one that is select, uh, if I select one point right now, always uh, catch the points with a little window. Don't just click on them because later on it might be possible that there are two points at the same location. So use a window and catch it. Uh, to see that when you use a window and catch it, down here it says this is vertex number five out of spline number one. One, two, three, four, five. That's the fifth vertex in this spline. So uh, select it with a window and when you hit delete, it will be deleted and the two neighbors will be now connected. If I do undo, control C, uh, there it is again. Okay, so that is in vertex level. The next thing that you can do in vertex level is uh, changing a point from being a linear point, right now it's all linear vertices, vertices 
uh, to change them into a smooth or one that has a handle. So if I want to turn this from a corner into a smooth point, you need to select it and then hold your mouse on it and make a right mouse click. And here you can see somewhere it says Bezier corner, Bezier corner and smooth. And if I turn it, for example, into a smooth point, you see now it's not a corner anymore, but it's a smooth point. What's the difference between smooth and Bezier? A Bezier point is also a smooth point, but the curve in it is defined by a handle. But it's one handle and you can define it by dragging it and the influence of the handle onto the curve is longer and if I bring it closer, it's a shorter influence. Uh, when you do a right click and choose smooth, then it's an automatic handle. It doesn't have a handle. The curve, how it is, is defined by how far the neighbors are away. So when the neighbors are closer, it's a, uh, it's a softer curve. And when you're further away, then it's a smaller curve. Okay. So that is, and there's also a fourth one, and that is Bezier corner. And a Bezier corner actually has two separately adjustable handles. So see, I can adjust this one, and I can adjust this one at the same time. Uh, not at the same time, uh, separately. Okay, or I can just bring it back into a corner and uh, bring it back to the original position. That was almost everything that is uh, that you can do to a, to a vertex. Let's head on to the next level, the segment level. And with a segment level, you can do much more. You can now also scale and rotate them, for example. So I'm switching to the second level that is, uh, uh, that is segment level. And with a segment now, I can select the line between two vertices. Now, segments, you should always select them by clicking on it. And they turn red, and then you can, for example, move them. Of course, when you move them, the two neighboring uh, segments will adjust themselves to a different uh, position and so on. Segments can also be rotated, so you can also go to select and rotate, and that allows you to rotate your segment, or you can go to scale, and that will scale the segment, so it will make it shorter or longer. So that is what you can do differently now when you select the segment. Also, another difference is when you select a segment and you hit delete, it's not going to close or the neighbors will not do the job. If you delete a segment, you will get a hole, a, a gap in your spline. Actually, you don't get, you will get a gap in your spline and you end up with having two splines. The first one, spline one, and this is spline two. So by making a gap, you, set, you just cut it into two pieces. That's why I'm going to hit undo and bring it back my, my, my segment. Of course, you can also select more than one segment and do the same thing, move, rotate, scale with more than one segment at the same time. Okay, so deleting, rotating, scaling, moving, that's basically uh, the most important things. We're gonna go th quickly through the first, uh, of the first uh, seg uh, levels and then we come back and refine it, so to say. The third level is called spline level and right now, with my spline here, it doesn't make a lot of sense because in spline level, you can select the whole thing, the whole spline. Uh, why do, do I say it doesn't make sense? Because uh, it is only one spline. So all I can select is the whole spline. Let's do what I did before. I'm going back to the segment level and I'm deleting one segment out of the spline. And actually now I turned my spline, as I mentioned before, in two splines. So now in spline level, it makes sense because in spline level, I can separately touch both ends of the spline. Remember, the, th the, the object itself, the object that is called line 001 is still the whole thing. They have the same color. When you select it, it will get selected at the same time. So that is the object. But when you go into spline level, you can select the splines by themselves. Okay, so that is what the spline level is for. When you have more than one spline in an object, you can separately touch those. Okay, I'm getting out of uh, spline level right now. So now um, let's see what else can we do uh, here. And I'm, therefore, I'm going to delete the spline. I'm also going to delete those objects, and I'm going to show you something with the rectangle. Let's give it a different color 
uh, bright blue. Oh, it's not very bright. Let's go for a, uh, I don't know, this purple. Good. So here's my rectangle and I'm going to select it. And it is already turned into an editable spline. So if you now create your own rectangle, uh, make sure you do a right click, convert to editable spline to turn it into an as the name says, editable spline. Now I'm going into the segment level and I delete one segment of my rectangle. Gone. And get out of the segment level. So now it's an open spline. It's not, uh, not closed anymore. And here is the next thing that I would like to show you. Um, in which level, uh, which, which level do, do you need to... Um, to close it again. So there's more than one way to close it. So you could create a new line and so on. Here's a create line, but, but the best way to close something like this, a simple closing just with a straight line, uh, that's what you can do in different levels. You can do it in, in vertex level. You can do it in segment level, I guess. No, actually it's not possible in segment. Let's do it in uh, vertex level. So in vertex level, you, you will find that there is a button on the right side that's called connect. And with connect, you can click on one, then hold your mouse and pull the rubber band away and drop it on the next vertex. So between two vertices, you can connect your, uh, you can connect it and you also close it this way. Okay, so once you have a hole in your object, for example, I'm the segment, I'm deleting this segment, now there's a hole. In vertex level, I can go to connect, click and hold and drag it and close it. That is the simplest way to close with a straight line by using connect. I'm going to do the same thing one more time. I'm deleting another segment here and now I'm going to show you one method that is a little bit uh, uh, it's completely um, looks like it is much more work, but it's just to make sure that uh, that uh, you also know a different way to do it. So the next way is in vertex level here. I'm going to find actually you don't need to be in any level at all because the function of create line is available even though you are not in one of the sub levels. Here is create line, and create line basically allows you to draw another line. But what you want is you want this to precisely snap to those corners. So while you have create line turned on, you need to have your object snap, your 3D object snap turned on. Just to remind you, I do a right click on object snap. It has to have end point on, not grid point as you, yours might be. So go to create line, Turn on your object snap and now you see it snaps and you can click once and over here click twice. And now it asks you, do you want to weld it? Which means the two points will be welded together and you say yes and there it is. So you can create a line simply by creating a new one and when you click on an existing point it will ask you if you want to weld it. To make sure you check if it is really welded you go into the vertex level and you draw a window around it and it should say for example spline 1 vertex 2. Okay let's try this one. Select here. Ah see this is a point now it says if I select it with a, I'm gonna turn off the object snap. Um, if I select this point with a window, and I mentioned before, it's possible that there are two vertices at the same position. So they are exactly at the same position, but it's still, you have two lines, two points there. When you select them with a window, it says two vertices selected. So it's not one, it's two. In order to make those two welded together into one, because otherwise it's not a closed line. It's still, it's open because it has two points here at the same position point. In, in vertex, both are selected, so it says two vertices selected here. You click on the weld button and what the weld button does, it welds together points that are closer than 0.1 units away. So it will never weld those two, this one and this one. So if I select both of them and hit weld, nothing happens because they are f much further away than 0.1 those two actually are zero apart from each other because they are at the same 
position. So I can select them and I hit weld. And now if I select them again, it doesn't say anymore two vertices selected, but it says vertex one of spline one is selected. Okay. So what did I show in this, in this, in this example now? We did the create line just to draw a new line. The automatic welding worked for the second point, but it did not work for the first point. So we went into the vertex level, select both vertices and welded them together. The next thing that I would like to show you in the vertex level is what if I want additional points? What if I want a point here somewhere in the middle? Any additional points? So you have to go into vertex level to find the, the button refine. And with refine on, you can now, when you hold your mouse and you are somewhere on a, on a, on a segment, you can click to add more vertices to the line. Of course, those vertices, they will appear anywhere, so you cannot snap or you can define where they are. That is not what the refine button is for, but with refine, you can just add more vertices. To get rid of those vertices, of course, you, we know already how that works. You select the additional ones. By the way, those are not corners, see? Those are, especially this one, that is a curve. And if you don't want this, just select all the vertices you can do when you're in vertex mode control a select all the vertices right click and corner now you turn them all into corners but if you select the um, the ones that you just created by hitting refine select all those points and hit delete and they are gone uh, there's another way to refine or to get more vertices a little bit more controlled in a controlled way and that is not in the vertex level but in segment level in segment you can select a segment and you will find a button on the bottom right here that's called divide and when for example here it says divide one that will divide it so exactly one time so it divide and now i get one extra vertex vertex right here in the middle if i select the small segment now and i choose divide two then it will be divided in with two points, so in total three segments, and so on. So you can select any segment and just define how many times it should be divided. Five times, you get six segments out of it. Okay, that is a little bit more controlled because it's usually right in the middle uh, that the divide function works. Okay. So uh, that was uh, another thing that is uh, uh, possible in the, uh, in the segment level. The next thing that I would like to show you, we need, uh, we have to uh, get a new object there. And what I would like to show you is uh, the attach function. Uh, let me get a uh, circle. Remember, interpolation for the circle should always be adaptive to make it nice and smooth. Uh, and I'm going to use a circle and another circle and a star. So, three objects, three names, star, circle, circle, three different colors. Okay, those are three objects. And I would like to turn those objects, it doesn't matter, I'm going to start with the first circle. Select the circle, right-click, and convert to editable spline. I don't want it to be parametric as a circle. I just want the regular spline with its three levels there. But what we are planning to do is actually not even in one of those levels. And the next thing is, it's the attach function. With attach function, you can take one spline, use attach, and attach something else to it. For example, the second line or the star. So now, when we get out of attach, we only have one object left. So those two splines that are created as an extra object are now part of the object called circle one, but with attach. So if you have more than two objects to attach, you can also use attach multiple. When you use attach multiple, you will get a list of objects and you can choose hundreds of objects altogether. That is especially handy when you uh, import 
some geometry and or some shapes that you want to use for example lines on a parking lot or circles for columns or uh, something else that you want to import with attach multiple it's much better so there it is now it's uh we have this is now one object uh, this one object if we have to uh, touch one circle one star separately I, we can always do that by using the spline option so with spline sub level i can always select one of the splines that used to be an object or even the one that i used uh, to start with okay so in spline level you can uh, m still grab them delete them scale them move them rotate and so on when you get out of all the levels the object itself is still one object one color later on one material and so on and so on okay so far then let's do a little bit of combination between objects and then we could do a little exercise to practice uh, playing with 2d lines and uh, we can spend we could spend hours just working with um, with 2d lines what i would like to show you is let's take uh, something really simple let's do two rectangles here's one rectangle and make sure they overlap here a little bit two objects and i want them to be one object you can start with any of the two right click convert to editable spline only when you turn it into an editable spline you get all the options here for splines and now i use attach uh, maybe i show you attach multiple and that opens the window and it gives you all the objects that you can attach let me cancel that quickly and i'm gonna also i'm going to put a sphere here so if i want to do attach for this rectangle and i go modify and choose attach multiple it will not show me the sphere because the sphere is not possible to attach you can only if it's a line you can only attach other lines so you cannot attach the sphere only the rectangle so we can delete the sphere right away so now the the rectangle are rectangles are attached and as we have both of them drawn in top view they really intersect because they are both on x and y plane so actually those points really intersect but if i go into vertex level those points are not existent so only the corners are there so how do we how can we for example delete everything here in the middle and make one object out of it the first thing is in spline uh, in spline level there is a button called trim and when you get to go to trim you can click and trim objects so here now i trimmed this part of the line or one more time trim here and gone so i trim away and then this intersection will be calculated the only problem and i get out of trim here is those points here are not welded together because that is not done automatically so this point here is one point from this element and at the same position one point of the other element when i am going into vertex level and i select both of them with a window you can see two vertices selected so uh, if we want this to be a closed nice object we have to weld those two points we can do it at the same time because remember welding only welds objects that are closer together than 0 0.1 in distance and this is further away so there it is uh, if you really want to make sure that this is a perfect piece of geometry without any uh, without any open without without any open vertices or with double vertices you can always go into spline level select the spline and then it should select the whole thing not if you remember in spline level before it was only this part was one spline and the second one was from the other spline so now it's one spline and here somewhere it says this is spline one and it's closed so we know that all points are perfectly welded always check that because if you want to do something with the geometry if you want to make this your floor uh, your from your floor plan uh, the, the 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 floor of of your of your room and so on you want to make sure that it's really a closed uh, polyline 
Okay, so that was the option where you can trim something. Just as you can, as you can trim, you can also extend something. And um, to extend uh, an object, let's quick. How can we do extending? Um, I'm I'm going to do. Okay, let's do a circle. So here, oh sorry, here is a circle. And inside the circle, I'm going to draw uh, a regular line, and I'm going to draw it from the outside to somewhere in here. Oh, let's make a smiley. Sorry. Uh, oh, no, not a smiley. Are we going to make one of those um, Pac-Man things? So here's the line. So here's the first line that is too long, so I, it needs some trimming off. So it's, it only goes to the circle. And here's the second line that needs some extending to go until it hits the circle. But first, we have to attach both together. I'm going this time, I'm, with, with, uh, which, which, no, with which one do you think I will start? With the circle or with the line? When I select the circle, there is no attach under modify because it is still parametric. But when I select the line, there is an attach here. And I can attach the circle. Now it's one object. Make sure it's set to adaptive. So now I, it's one object. Now I go into spline level and I choose trim for this piece and I use extend for this piece. And now one more time trim for this piece. It's now the, looks like almost the ghost from Pac-Man. And now, uh, no, not the ghost from Pac-Man, the Pac-Man. And now I'm going to have to weld those points because when I get out of trim in spline level, this is still an object and this is an object. And to make sure they are one object, I have to weld those two points. So select vertex, select both of them and hit weld. And now in spline level, you can see it's one spline that is, here it says, closed. So that was the most basic functions when you deal with 3D lines. Now, I would like to make, uh, I would like to show you a little example what we can do with the lines in 3ds Max. But um, to do that, actually what, I'm, what I need first is I'm going to download a picture and I'm quickly showing you what I'm doing. Okay, so what I wanted to do is I went into a Google image search and I typed in Batman logo. And what I want is I want one of those um, of those uh, orange, um, yeah, simple Batman logo like this one. Um, that is, oh, that is huge. That is 5,000 by 5,000. That is really, yeah, let's, let's take it. Let's try to get it. I'm um, just stealing it. So uh, save image as. Now I'm going to place my Batman logo into 3ds Max. So let's, there it is. In top view, I'm going for views and uh, views and viewport background. And I'm going to bring in a custom image file. The best way is to just open the configure viewport background window, Alt B, configure viewport background. So here's the, uh, the viewport background. And what I want is I want a use file and which one I'm gonna search for it. Here's my Batman logo. And let's just, uh, the aspect ratio of my picture should match the bitmap so it's not going to get uh, distorted somehow and there it is. So I'm also going to turn on my background grid so that you can see it. You can move your, your background grid or for example if there is an object on it so here's a big box on it. Uh, you can move your whole scene and the picture will always be in the background. This is a nice uh, quick way to, to draw something, but it's not the best way actually if you, want, uh, if you want to do something else with it. So for example, use it for modeling purposes and so on, but for a quick drawing, it's quite good. So you have to remember that you're not, you're not supposed to pan your view because that will change the, the, the look. So what we're gonna start with from the top, and I'm gonna start with an ellipse. 
uh, create shape. Here's an ellipse, and I'm gonna draw a big ellipse. And uh, it is pretty maybe hard to see, so I'm gonna start with the uh, with the inner ellipse here, and I just uh, fix the size. Oh, sorry, this one. So it's like uh, like this. Almost perfect. And a little bit higher, you can see it goes up to here and here. So let's make it a little bit larger. So there it is. It's the inner ellipse there. Now if I, uh, if I turn off my background picture, you will, uh, you will simply see, uh, you will, uh, will be able to see it. But for right now, I'm gonna uh, do, draw a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna use a line to draw those, those objects here. And I'm gonna start a little bit outside and I draw those lines. So here's one, here's one. Like this. Okay. And I'm also going to draw the two lines for the ears or the head and the ears. Hold the shift key there. And I'm not going. Oh, this doesn't look good. We can. We have to adjust that. Uh, so I know if it's pretty hard to see um, here. It's uh, the the curve is not does not very precisely work. So we're going to modify and uh, select the the point here, the vertex. Maybe pull out the a little bit more and take this point up here. And oh, it's perfect. Perfect. Okay, so I don't need the second curve here because, because it's basically a mirrored version of it. What I need is one more curve, and that is uh, down here. And down here, I need uh, a drawing a line that looks like this. So there it is. I first draw it, and then escape to stop it, go to modify into uh, vertex level and adjust it later on. So adjust the handles. Maybe this one. Perfect. And here's another one. That is a corner, but I'm going to turn this into a bezier so that I have a second handle there. And all right, good. Uh, you probably don't have no glue what I'm up to. Um, to show you uh, a few more things, here's my big ellipse. The ellipse is the inner, it's not the outer ellipse, it's the middle one and we need, a th we need actually two more. So what we need is, I'm gonna select the ellipse and it's, you know, it's an ellipse and it is, uh, it's, uh, it's still parametric. And what you can do is, you can turn it into a regular spline by converting it in, in, into an editable spline. So now it's, it's editable, and now I can select my, uh, my spline, my ellipse, and use the outline function. So I select, it's uh, uh, selected here, and you will find the outline. Here it is. Click on outline, and now I can click on it and drag an outline to the inner, so here's an inner copy of it, and one more time to the outer ellipse. So I just made three ellipses out of the one, and turn outline off. So you don't see anything, but uh, to make it simpler, I am turning off my background image. View, background, a viewport background, and I just use a gradient color so that it's gone. So here's what I have drawn in lines. So let me get that uh, bright blue, maybe select them. Yes. So here they are. This is all I have. Here's my top one. Here's the ellipse, which is not adaptive. No, it is adaptive. It just looks strange because of the grid. Now I s need to copy those two things. So this one and this one I'm going to copy. I select both of them. One, control, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, control and the other one. Now both of them are selected and I use um, tools mirror to mirror them. 
but not on the same location. I don't want to, I want to mirror a copy. And now I can use the offset and I'm going to use the offset in X direction and I'm going to offset it so I get a copy of it. Here is good. Okay, so there, uh, what, where did I look? I just looked at the ears and make sure that those uh, points, they, uh, they uh, have the same intersection here. Okay, that's it. Good. That's what I want. Now I have four lines for my ears and my three outlines there. Let's start with uh, the ears up here. And I'm going to attach them all together. I'm going to start with any line. I'm going to start with this one. I use attach. I attach the ears and the wings on this side and also this and this for the tail part. Get out of attach. Now into spline level and I'm going to trim a little bit. I'm going to trim away everything that is above the ears, this and this and everything that is here above the tail here, so that it's this and this. Remember, once you trimmed, you always have to go back into vertex level and weld the point that you just trimmed. So select those two and hit weld. Select this two actually on one place and hit weld there as well. So my two lines are ready. Now, the next thing is I need to add to at the, the inner the inner of the two ellipses or three ellipses. So the problem is they are all one object. When I select the ellipse with the outline, what I created is I created an one object with three splines. So into spline level, select the inner spline. And this is part of the ellipse object, but I just I want it to be a, a separate object. So uh, while it's selected in spline level, I'm going to use detach. So select it and use detach. It now creates its own object. While I'm still in here, um, no, I'm not, that's good. No, while I'm still in here, I'm also going to detach something else. Um, I'm going to detach this outer ellipse, but this time I'm going to detach it as a copy. Detach as copy because I, I want to keep it. I want to keep the object having two ellipses, but I want the outer ellipse as an extra object. So I'm going to use copy. And now, remember, shape two. That is the outer ellipse. So uh, now I'm ready to assemble everything together. So select my uh, my head and tail and attach the inner ellipse. Now it's a, one object. Use in spline level trim to trim this piece, this piece, and this piece, and to trim the tails, I use this, this, and this. Always weld after trimming. What, you see what I did? I just went into vertex level, hit Control A on the keyboard, select all the vertices, and hit weld, because it only welds the one that are close together, so it doesn't weld anything else. So that is, the, that is the Batman in the middle. And now all we need is uh, the exterior. And now I'm quickly, as this tutorial is over, I'm quickly turning this into a uh, Batman, uh, into a 3D Batman logo. But more about how to turn 2D lines into 3D objects, of course, uh, in our next tutorial when, it, when we turn when we turn it uh, when to 2D lines into 3D models. So let's quickly, uh, let's, uh, let me quickly just um, give you some height here and make it so it looks like the Batman logo. Also, this one here will get the, no, will get the bevel there and there should be spline sh uh, two. Was it shape two? And shape two was, what's going on? Shape two is the, um, so like this. Let's quickly change the color into black for this one and golden or let's give it a new color. 
add custom color. Let's create a nice orange here. Yes, this one. So, and here is my here is my Batman logo. Let's get it into perspective. And here we are. No lighting, just a very simple uh, rendering of the Batman logo. Okay, so that was the uh, today's tutorial about how to use 2D shapes. Of course, we're going to use 2D shapes more and more um, in this in this series of uh, video tutorials. Next time, the next one will be about turning uh, 2D lines into 3D objects. But for today, I would like to say thank you, uh, and I'll see you in the next video.